Greetings, this is August 30th at 6 p.m. We are looking at the Sheridan Cam from Dry BC, and this was morning, afternoon, and evening. And I'm not sure if we can discern smoke coming through the trees. It's starting to look that way. Uh, it does appear to have a lot of haze building, and then we've got this light coming from the west now going through the trees. So. It's something to consider. Jumping over to the Begbie Cam, it would be difficult to discern that a forest fire was uh, just a few kilometers to the east. Uh, no haze appearing, there's some uh, high cloud and otherwise blue sky in the background. Going to the Big Bar Cam at uh, the Big Bar Rest Area on Highway 97, it's a different picture. We are perhaps seeing some haze coming from south of High Heum and now east of High Heum. So let's look at the latest infrared and this came in at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, these are virtually unchanged in position or territory from the last update. But we can zoom in closer. We're looking at uh, the last update at 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and now we're going to 3.30 p.m. And we're seeing a lot of orange in there. That means older hot spots and uh, less new development. Although I am seeing a lot of red uh, within and around some of the fringe areas. And I've talked about it before in other past videos about how it's much like starting a fire on a piece of paper and it's burning outwards looking for new fuel. We are zooming in now looking at the most northern flank of the Elephant Hill fire uh, approximately let's say f five five and a half kilometers from Sheridan uh, five kilometers from Highway 24 to the north and uh, two and a half kilometers from the eastern shore of Watch Lake. If we scroll down now, I'd like you to look at Hutchinson Lake on the left of center on your screen. Uh, a lot of orange, none, no red. Uh, that's a very good indication that uh, fire is holding in that position. Uh, however, if we look down to the lower right-hand portion of your screen, Young Lake, uh, south of the lake, there is a new grouping of red, maybe five or six hot spots. I'm also looking at Pressy Lake right now, uh, southeast, and that's just up from uh, right of center on your screen. Uh, there's some orange in there. I see maybe three or four red hot spots. And of course, what's occurring around Jim Lake, uh, much more orange. However, I am seeing uh, uh, this fringe of new development so that means uh, that this is a very volatile situation going on top of that hill. We've moved further south to look at uh, the area around Vedette and Loon Lake. Uh, south of Loon Lake a lot of those new hotspots are now turning orange that's uh, approximately three kilometers south and Vedette still not seeing any nearby uh, red at all that's a very good sign however you will have to watch those existing uh, long-term hot spots uh, approximately two kilometers to the west and we do have this patch it's uh, east of Loon Lake approximately two kilometers and it's turned orange that's a good sign but we've got to watch that we're gonna move south of High Heum and look at the infrared that was displaying at approximately 1.30 p.m. and then we're rolling over to the infrared that's displaying at 3.30 p.m. and you can see a lot of that activity has turned into the older time period so less new activity um, seems to be holding in that position uh, if we move further south towards uh, the Battle Creek area uh, that as well a couple of new hot spots in the western fringe of that fire pocket but essentially it's held uh, throughout those winds now let's take a look at the photographic evidence this is nasa's world view and we are overlooking the elephant hill wildfire if you look at your center of your screen that's the high heum area a uh, little bit north of center is young lake and then right towards the top of your screen 
we can see Watch Lake, Little Green Lake, and uh, Lake of the Woods area. It's very obscured. There's a lot of smoke plumes. So let's zoom in and see what we can see. This is uh, south of High Heum and the area towards Barricade Creek. We can also see some plumes south of Loon Lake. That would be that three kilometers south from the middle of the lake. And now we've moved over to Young Lake. And there you can see what's occurring just south of the lake at, in that corner section. And on the other side of the lake, we see a very fine plume uh, where it's still in the valley. We can also see how the wind is really trying to push everything to the northeast. Uh, that's where a lot of the smoke is going and I suspect the fire, if it's capable, is trying to throw uh, ash and embers along these paths. If we move further north, now we're looking at that region to the east of Green Lake, uh, east of Watch Lake, and on that approach between Sheridan and uh, towards Highway 24. It is difficult to see if that's Green Lake just to the left of center on your screen. I'm also trying to make out those two extensions of fire that are on either side of North Bonaparte Road, uh, almost directly center of your screen. Well, it's subjective at best when you're trying to peer through what's happening in the smoke and uh, why it's difficult to establish a perimeter until uh, crews both in the air and on the ground are able to coordinate and decide where fire pockets actually are because there can be a lot of unburnt uh, forest within. I'm jumping over to Windy now and our viewer uh, Rapunzel A reported uh, six kilometers an hour coming from the south gusting up to 14 km an hour. So the wind model here is showing 10 kilometers an hour uh, coming from the southwest and the lighter blue on your screen is lower velocity so that central core of the Elephant Hill wildfire perimeter appears to have a little bit less velocity and towards the outside edges over Green Lake we're experiencing more velocity. Uh, I'm seeing 11 kilometers an hour coming from the southwest right around Watch Lake so there could be higher gusts uh, over the lake areas Looking at the forecast, you could be getting peak wind right about now. Uh, there is some cloud in the sky and I have reports that there's pockets of rain in the lower mainland. So hopefully they'll send some of that uh, northeastwards. I am looking at the other computer model and lots of variation in the wind direction, uh, primarily coming from the south and again, slight bit of cloud in the sky. I'm also seeing that this wind model is showing a little bit lower velocity, a little bit lower wind speed, so it's going to vary depending on your location, whether you're on the ridge lines, plateaus, so please do check the regional links below for all the up-to-date bulletins because you'll want to know if they suspect the fire perimeter is moving in an area that should be deemed under evacuation order or alert. Um, stay on top of that. Have your uh, resources all prepared ahead of time. And thank you very much for watching. Everyone, please be safe out there.